show you again that Anderson lies to defend the post-trib satanic heresy that it is. He lies, he adds terms to scripture, and just totally twists up the scripture saying to prove his heretical post-trib heresy. Typical of, of post-trib heretics, they always have to twist and contort the scriptures to prove their heresy. So let's get right into this, refuting this heretical nonsense that is the post-trib rapture propagated by heretics like Stephen Anderson. So Jesus is saying, I want to warn you about coming trials and tribulations so that when they come, you won't be offended. He's saying, I'm warning you so that you'll know what to expect and you'll remember that I told you about this. He said, these things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. Well, how does that tie in with end times prophecy? Well, the Bible warns us about the tribulation for the exact same reason. All right, so what he does, typical of post-trib heretics, they'll take verses that are talking about tribulation in the life of a Christian, talking about trials and tribulation, and they'll take that and they'll say, look, it proves we're gonna go through, quote, the tribulation. Uh, the Bible never says the tribulation is a, as a title for this coming time period, okay? But this is what they always do. They'll have the look for verses that are about the time of Jacob's trouble and then uh, go to verses in the Pauline epistles that are about Christian suffering and say, see, look, we're going to go through the tribulation. Uh, it doesn't say that, okay? He adds the scripture. The proper term is the time of Jacob's trouble. Christians do have persecution in this life, but it doesn't mean we're going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. Totally twisting what the scripture is saying, but typical of post-trip heretics. They always have to twist the scriptures and contort them. And doing this is just typical of post-trip heretics. The Great Tribulation is described in so many places in the Bible. Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, Revelation 6, Revelation 13. He shows us over and over again because he doesn't want us to be offended. So again, Anderson adds to the scriptures. He says, quote, the tribulation is described, or say, sorry, he says, quote, the great tribulation, I'll say it his way, is described in many places. Um, the Bible never says the tribulation as a title, okay? It's a description, absolutely. Then, you know, then shall there be great tribulation, you know, after the tribulation of those days, but it doesn't say the tribulation as a title. The title is found in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, the time of Jacob's trouble, or called Daniel's 70th week. It's not called the tribulation. And of course, he goes to Matthew chapter 24, where it talks about how immediately after the tribulation, and he says, see, look, it says after the tribulation. Uh, no, keep reading. It says after the tribulation of those days. You're making it into a title. You're adding to the scripture. But typical of post-trib heretics. They all, again, they always have to add to scripture. The title is the time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah 30 verse 7. Okay, not the tribulation. A description, yes, but a title, no. Okay, let's continue. Today I want to read for you one of the clearest passages that just explicitly spells out a post-tribulation rapture, or a rapture that comes after the tribulation. Matthew 24, beginning in verse 29, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So typical of post-trib heretics always having to run the Matthew chapter 24, okay? Because it says after the tribulation. Well, again, it says after the tribulation of those days. It doesn't say after the tribulation. So they're adding to the scripture. But second of all, Matthew chapter 24 is not even about the rapture or the resurrection, I'll, I'll say the, the proper term. Um, the Matthew chapter 24 is about the second coming. Uh, you know, how do we know this? It's because 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 58 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14 and 17 both mention dead saints rising before the living saints. There's no mention of this in Matthew chapter 24. There's zero mention of dead saints rising before the living saints in Matthew chapter 24. Also, in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 58 and, uh, sorry, for, yeah, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 got, got mixed up with 2 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 both mention God, sorry, the trump of God. I'll say it that way, uh, the trump of God, or God speaking with his voice like a trump, okay? There's no mention of this in Matthew chapter 24 either. So it can't be about the same event. There's no mention of dead saints, and there's no mention of God speaking with his voice like a trump, the trump of God, you know? So that, again, just totally twisting the scripture. It's not about the rapture, it's about the second coming. So typical of post trippers having to twist Matthew chapter 24. There are all kinds of theological works, and yet not one scrap of paper before the year 1830 that teaches a pre-tribulation rapture. 
and typical of post-tribbers to always have the run to the 1830 argument. There is no rapture before 1830. Okay, uh, this has actually been disproven many, many times. There's writings about the rapture, the pre-tribulation rapture before 1830. The Shepherd of Hermes talks about the pre-tribulation rapture from the second century. Uh, a lot of different Catholic councils condemned the pre-trib rapture, pre-millennial beliefs. It's been talked about and preached about and taught years, like hundreds of years before 1830. But here's the thing though, even if it was only invented in 1830, the standard is what does the scriptures say? Okay, the standard is not who said what first or what's the historic position of the church. The standard is what does the scriptures say? So if this, even if it was only uh, taught and invented in 1830, what does the scripture say, okay? I don't care when it was invented. Even if it was only invented in 1830, if the scriptures teach it, you go by it, okay? It doesn't matter what man have, has always believed. It doesn't matter what's the historic position of the church. And it's kind of funny, because they'll say it's the historic position of the church. Well, they're right. It is the historic position of the Catholic church. In the Catholic church catechism, number 675, they teach a, a post-tribulational rapture. But again, even if it was only invented in 1830, still the standard is what does the scriptures say, okay? The standard isn't who said what first or what, what have Christians always believed. So it's a whole straw man argument. But again, there are teachings about it before 1830. The Shepherd of Hermes, the best example, from the second century. So don't be deceived by all this post-trip nonsense. It is satanic heresy. It is uh, very, very false and heretical. The reason why I'm hard against post the post-trip heresy is because doctrine is different in the time of Jacob's trouble. And these heretics are also non-dispensational, and they're going to be preaching eternal security. And I've, I've said this in other videos, but many of these post-trib heretics say basically are non-dispensational, so they think the whole Bible is for is written to Christians and written for Christians. And, and of course, there is you know instruction in righteousness, but it's not all doctrinally for us. And these people who preach eternal security, which again, amen, eternal security is scriptural. Ephesians 1.13, Ephesians 4.30, First or Second Corinthians 1, 21 and 22, we're sealed. Okay? Eternal security is scriptural, but in the time of Jacob's trouble, there is no eternal security. You can't take the mark of the beast. You have to endure to the end and be saved, Matthew 24, 13. You have to uh, keep the commandments, uh, Revelation chapter 12, I think it's verse 17, and Revelation 14, 12. So there is an element of works that are involved. And again, if you take the mark, you're damned. So these heretics, these post-trip heretics, they're going to uh, they're gonna be t preaching eternal security in this time period. Because non-dispensationalism and post -trip her the post-trip heresy crossover, these heretics are going to be preaching eternal security in this time period and getting people to take the mark of the beast. That's why I'm really hard against the post-trib heresy because it's very, very serious. Doctrine is different in this time of Jacob's trouble. So, don't be deceived by the satanic post-trib garbage that it is. God bless you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.